In the last lecture, we learned that every browser has a JavaScript engine which is responsible for executing JavaScript code. Now, in this lecture, let's understand how a JavaScript program gets executed by the browser. So basically, you will learn all the steps involved in executing a JavaScript program by the JavaScript engine. But before we talk about JavaScript code execution by the browser, let's learn about some of the basics of any program execution. So the program which we write using any programming language like C, Java, C++, JavaScript, etc. These are called as high level programming languages. A high level language is human readable and it is understandable by humans. But when we run these programs written in high level programming language in a computer, the computer does not understand these high level programming languages like C++ or JavaScript. Computers only understand zeros and ones. And this is called as low level language or machine code. Computers only understand machine codes. They only understand zeros and ones. So ultimately all the programs, no matter which programming language we are using to write that program, it must be converted from high level language to zeros and ones in order to execute it. And the converted code is called as machine code. So a computer processor only understands machine code. It does not understand high level programming language like C or JavaScript. And we as a human, we cannot write programs in machine code by ourselves. If we have a look at high level programming language and a machine code, it will look something like this. In the left hand side, you have a program written in JavaScript. And when this JavaScript program gets converted to machine code, it looks something like the image which you see in the right hand side. So it is basically zeros and ones. And for humans, it is practically impossible to write a program only using zeros and ones. And that's why we use high level languages like C++, JavaScript, C Sharp, etc. to write our program. And then we convert it to machine code using some tool in order to execute it. And the conversion of high level language to machine code can be done by using either compilation process or interpretation process. So we have tools which helps us convert our high level programming code into machine codes. And these tools can be compilers or interpreters. So we can convert a code into machine code either by compilation process or interpretation process. So let's understand them one by one. And let's start with compilation. So in compilation process, the entire source code is converted into machine code at once. And this is done using a compiler. So we have source code. That source code gets compiled into machine code. And this conversion happens with the help of a compiler. This machine code is then written into a portable file that can be executed on any operating system. So here, as you can see, when we compile this source code to machine code using a compiler, that machine code is stored in a portable file. This portable file, it can have an extension of .exe or .out or .dll, etc. So basically, the exe files, which you might be aware of, those are the portable files which contains the compiled machine code of a program. Okay, and these portable files are basically the executables which can be executed to start the compiled program. So what we do is once the source code is compiled to machine code and when it is stored in a portable file, that portable file can be later executed to run the program. So in the compilation process, we have two different steps involved. In the first step, the program written in high level programming language is compiled to a machine code and it is saved in a portable file. Then in the second step, the portable file is executed in the CPU, that means in the processor to run the program. Now, in this compilation process, the execution can happen way after the compilation of code. So the source code will be compiled to machine code and it is stored in a portable file. That portable file can be executed in the future after the compilation is complete. So when you have a portable file like exe, you can run that program, that means that exe anytime in the future after it is generated, right? Now, if you're using Windows OS, there you have a program called calculator. And when you open that calculator program, 
it basically executes the calculator.exe which is created by compiling a high level programming language so the calculator.exe is that portable file which is created from compiling a high level code and it can be executed anytime we want in our windows operating system okay and you can see this calculator.exe process running in the task manager so whenever you will run the calculator application in windows operating system you can open task manager and there you will see that in the processes calculator.exe is running all right so this is compilation process in a compilation process entire code is converted into machine code at once and it is written to a binary file that can be executed at a later point of time then we also have another way of converting a high level programming code into a machine code and that is called as interpretation in case of interpretation an interpreter is used to convert the source code written in high level language into a machine code so what interpreter does is it runs through the source code and execute it line by line so unlike compilation process where all the source code is converted to machine code at once in interpretation process the code is converted to machine code line by line and not at once so in case of interpretation again we have the source code and there we will have an interpreter which runs through the source code and converts and execute the code line by line so here we do not have the same two step as in case of compiler instead here the code is read converted and executed line by line all at the same time okay in case of interpretation each line of code is first converted to machine code and then it is executed immediately then the next line of code will be converted to machine code and executed immediately and this happens for each line of code in the program so in case of interpretation there is no saved machine code like we have in case of compilation in case of compilation we convert the source code to machine code and we save it in a portable file and then we can execute it later at any point of time but in case of interpretation the source code is directly converted to machine code and it is executed immediately there is no concept of saving the machine code somewhere and then executing it later the conversion and execution happens immediately now javascript used to be purely interpreted programming language but the problem with interpreted language is that they are much much slower than the compiled languages and this used to be okay for javascript but now with modern javascript and fully fledged web applications that we build and use today low performance is no longer acceptable and hence javascript is no more just an interpreted language many people still think that javascript is an interpreted language but that's not really true anymore so instead of simple interpretation modern javascript engine uses mix between compilation and interpretation which is called as just in time compilation so now let's also talk about just in time compilation and how it compiles the source code into a machine code and execute it in case of just in time compilation the entire code is converted into machine code at once and then executed immediately let's try to understand it so here also we will have the source code and this source code will be compiled to a machine code using just in time compiler and it will be executed immediately so in just in time compilation process the entire source code is converted into machine code at once and it is executed immediately we are not saving machine code anywhere in a portable file as soon as the source code is converted into machine code it is executed immediately so there is no portable file which gets generated in case of just in time compilation here as soon as the program is compiled into machine code the execution of the code happens immediately after compilation and this is perfect for javascript because it is lot faster than just executing code line by line as in case of interpretation so here the difference between compilation and just in time compilation is that in the compilation process the source code gets compiled to machine code and it is stored in a portable file which can be executed at any later point of time but in case of just in time compilation again the entire source code will be converted into machine code at once but that machine code will not get saved in any portable file instead 
it will be executed immediately all right so this is a very high level overview of what a compiler interpreter and just in time compiler is and this is all you need to know for now so now let's understand how javascript program gets compiled and executed by the browser so we learned that javascript codes are executed by javascript engine so as soon as you run a javascript program in the browser javascript engine comes into play the first thing that javascript engine does is it starts passing the javascript program line by line and checks if the syntax of the code in the program is correct parsing simply means that javascript engine reads the code line by line but it does not execute it now if you have any error in your code javascript engine will immediately stop passing and it will throw the error however if everything is right there is no error there is no syntax error then the parser produces a data structure known as abstract syntax tree or it is also called as ast now you don't need to know what ast is in detail but for a high level understanding javascript engine splits up each line of code into pieces that are meaningful to the language like the const or the function keyword then it saves all these pieces into a tree like structure this resulting tree will later be used for generating the machine code and that tree is called as ast so for example let's say we have a very simple program where we are simply declaring a variable like this so here we are creating a variable num1 using this const keyword and we are assigning it with the value 72 now for this one line of code this is the abstract syntax tree or ast which will be generated in this abstract syntax tree you can see some of the information related to this code for example here you can see that we have a variable declaration with the name num1 and value 72 and the type of this variable is const so all these informations you can see in this abstract syntax tree besides that there is also a lot of other information here as you can see so this abstract syntax tree is just for a single line of code so just imagine what it would look like for a large real world application okay so you don't need to know what an ast is but i just wanted to give you a very high level overview of what ast looks like all right now the next step is the compilation so here the just in time compiler takes the ast and based on that it generates a machine code and this machine code which is generated here it gets executed right away by the javascript engine that's because as we learned the just in time compiler generates machine codes that gets executed immediately we do not save these machine codes in a portable file so as soon as the just in time compiler generates these machine codes it gets executed immediately so the machine code which is generated for the javascript program that gets executed by the javascript engine so now our program is running in the browser also remember that execution of javascript code happens inside javascript engine's call stack which we talked about in brief in the last lecture and we are going to learn about call stack in great detail in our coming lectures but here i just wanted to mention this point because i want you to remember this point for the next lectures now we are not finished yet here modern javascript engines have some pretty clever optimization strategies what they do is they create a very unoptimized version of machine code in the very beginning just so that it can start executing as fast as possible but in the background this code is being optimized and recompiled during the already running program execution and this can be done multiple times after each optimization the unoptimized code is simply swept with the new more optimized code without ever stopping execution and it is this process which makes modern javascript engines such as v8 so fast all this passing compilation and optimization it happens in some special threads inside the javascript engine that we cannot access from our code also different javascript engines implement this optimization technique in a slightly different way but in a nutshell this is what modern just in time compilation looks like for javascript 
and this is how javascript code is executed by the browser's javascript engine all right so in this lecture we learned how javascript program gets executed by the javascript engine and what are the steps involved in that execution process now in the next lecture we are going to go in more depth of how the javascript program gets executed by the javascript engine we are going to learn how the variables are created how the functions are executed how the value of this keyword is determined and many more things but to understand those concepts you should be clear of the concept which we have learned in this lecture so if you have any questions from this lecture then feel free to ask it thank you for listening and have a great day